Welcome to today's 3D print. I got some great news. The TiVo Tornado is fixed. I did have to add a component, the TL Smoothers, but they are only $8 a piece. Apparently it's an issue with the particular stepper drivers that the manufacturer chose to use for this printer. That especially when you slow it down, it loses steps. And those missed steps are what causes the salmon effect. To show you again, this is the print with the salmon effects. You can see it on its legs there. Hopefully that's coming out well enough for you to see. Yeah, there it is. I can see it. So I know you can too. Then the Benji. You can see it on the walls there. The sides of the boat. You get it right there. And on the rocket. You can see the Can you see it? There it is, right there. That's on all four sides. That salmon skin. So I turned the voltage up to 0.95 volts. The printer works with more authority now at the higher voltage, but it did not remove the salmoning effect. So the next step was the TL smoothers. And I installed them and got what is probably one of the nicest Marvins I've ever printed. I mean. I would almost say this is an ender quality Marvin. This is pretty impressive. And this is not even optimized G code, although there's not much to optimize really. It's just basically extrusion multiplier. But I just took the CR10 G code and threw it on the tornado and printed it. And here is the Marvin now. As you can see, absolutely no salmon skin whatsoever. Fantastic. That's actually a really nice Marvin. Very good detail. None of it was lost. The edges are sharp. I was afraid the TL Smoothers might soften the image, kind of like a Gaussian blur, but it doesn't. All the sharp detail is there. That is an excellent Marvin. Using the exact same G-code. I changed nothing. Here's the, the Benchy. And as you can see, no salmon skin whatsoever. And it's actually a pretty good benchy. A little over extrusion on the stack there. I don't know if you can see that. That stack isn't perfect. It's got like threading like a screw thread. But um, that's just a matter of tuning for the printer. Good benchy. And you could and show you you don't lose detail. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But you can read hashtag 3D benchy on the back. And this was not slowed down. This is 1 hour 20 minutes to print this. Actually, one hour, 20 minutes on the dot it took to print that. Not bad, especially not even cleaned up or optimized. Overhangs are great. It's good. It's got a couple of missed lines. I'm not sure why. You can see a, a couple of straggler lines that aren't quite right. But, you know, again, fast print. I haven't even tried to tune anything yet because, you know, I want to make sure it was worth putting the work into it. And, of course, the rocket. No salmon skin at all. Perfect rocket. Not bad. Nice, smooth, flat, straight sides. Very nice. Now, before the TL smoothers, so I'm going to try it again with the TL smoothers, I also printed a big one of these. I did get a little wobbling at the top. I think that was because it was too thin. And so the cooling fan plus the heat um, caused the top edge to warp a little bit. So I will try this again now that I've made those corrections. But here's the big one. It has the same warping issue that the CR-10 had where because it's so tall and thin, these open fins here, that um, they warped, I think, just from heat because they're too thin to hold their shape at that scale. So if I thicken them up, that should take care of that basically increase the extrusion multiplier so that the vase prints thicker because this is very very flexible you can see that's not cracking it's just flexing you can see it's very flexible but yeah that's cool now this of course does have the salmon skin you can see it let's see I can see it right here I'm not sure if you can in the camera or not I'm going to go through different angles and hope that you can see it But that will now be gone if I reprint this with the um, TL Smoothers. So, the TL Smoothers are these little gadgets. It's just a little chip thingy. 
and it's very important that you buy the I maybe they all come with it I don't know but a lot of them show these chips without that cable and you must have that cable because that cable is what allows you to link this to your printer and by the way you don't have to open the printer to put these on I just realized that this is simply a pass-through on the stepper wiring so you can plug this in at the stepper so if you want to try it out without tearing open your box you can plug these in in less than five minutes right at the X and Y steppers so, and just let them dangle have one up here on the arm and one on the back on the bed and just plug them directly in so what you do is you would unplug your wire going to the stepper plug this wire in then plug this wire into this and the wire that was going to your stepper into this done that's it your TL smoothers would be installed at that point and you'd be good to go but yeah that's great I mean this, this these results are fantastic I love these prints uh, and so this printer as far as I'm concerned is now worth going further into um, I've already ordered the fans so I can quiet the tornado up so it doesn't sound like a tornado because <laughs> man you hit 50 C and those fans kick on um, uh, maybe one day I'll just show you I'll turn it on and you'll hear how nice and quiet it is and then boom those fans turn on holy crap um, did I print anything else? Uh, I already showed you guys the, the, the sorceress so you've already seen her and she came out fantastic maybe I'll try her again now the salmon skin doesn't really affect her as much because it's an organic shape but maybe I'll try her again now that I have it correct um, just hey, why not have more than one I want to try her in one of the transparent filaments um, one of my viewers is having trouble with the Zyro Twinkling Red so maybe I'll try printing her with the Zyro Twinkling Red and see what happens um, I thought he was using this Zyro Red but he was actually using the Twinkling Red which is the transparent red with the sparkles in it um, anything else that's it I'm very pleased with the printer um, the heat bed is absolutely amazing the glass composite bed is absolutely amazing this printer is so flat it's crazy I mean it, I'll have to do it one day I'll have to take the bed off and then show you how quickly I can put the bed on eyeball level it and have a print going and you're good to go it, it holds the level so cleanly so flatly even my CR 10s although the newer one has um, a thicker glass so it's much much more level but my original one, oh my god, you're constantly just slightly micro tweaking level because the whole entire bed is not perfectly level. So you've got to find a middle ground where most of it's level. Um, although the newer one with the thicker glass does not have that problem. And the CR10 Mini does not have that problem. Those two printers, the newer CR10 and the CR10 Mini, are unattended printers. I can turn them on, prime the, the filament, and walk away, and I know that that first layer is going to stick. The TiVo Tornado is also in that category. It is a walk-away printer. As long as you've tested that filament before and you know it sticks reasonably well, um, and you, of course, slow your first layer down, it is a printer where you can turn it on, walk away, and you don't have to babysit that first layer because that bed level will hold. That bed level is flat, meaning the whole entire bed surface is crazy flat, so there's no deviation when you print something it's not like oh it's great here but it's a little too close here it's a little too far away here and this part of your print unsticks not a problem on this printer it is, it is fantastic for that I love the all metal parts I like the smaller control box although the QC on the hardware in the control box is not that great I had to tighten up the aircraft connector um, plugs on the back for the heat bed and hot end because they came loose on the inside so as you tightened up the nut it turned the whole connector which is not good um, anything else? The oh, the lack of a spool holder. That was a glitch, kind of like the Kappa Cat. Um, it does not come with a spool holder, but it comes with an STL file on the SD card that is a printable spool holder that slots right into the extrusion. Well, apparently, about 20 of these printers went out with blank SD cards, and of course, I got one. <laughs> so I'm like. Where's the spool holder? But you know, the heck with that. The Ender spool holder works so much better. Um, I'll make a video of the upgrades I've added to the printer. Um, they work great. They work fine. I'm going I'm to remix the Y tensioner because I don't like the fact that it can still move. It's just a slight modification to make it conform around the aluminum Y carriage plate. You can make it so that that doesn't move. So I'm going to make that change if I can figure out how to. I think I can do it. Just basically put a square there in Tinkercad and then model the Y carriage and use it as a cut to remove it and that should be close enough to keep it from moving. Um, the 
Bed leveling knobs work great, no problem. Um, I love them. They use the flat springs like the CR10 does. So it looks like they took all the good things from the CR10 and just made a couple of improvements as they should. They're coming in second. That doesn't mean the CR10 is bad, that just means the Tebow Tornado got to see the CR10 do everything right and do everything wrong and make the corrections. Why they chose those stepper drivers, if they create that salmoning effect, is beyond me. That's just dumb. I mean, hey Tebow, fix that. You know, put better drivers in there. Or include TL smoothers. Okay? Do something. But that that salmon skin is that's no good. I don't I don't want prints like that. I want prints like that. Um that's it for now. I will be installing the quieter fans in this. Uh, oh, the way I'm going to do it, I can't find 24 volt quiet fans, so I'm just going to use 12 volt quiet fans. It has two of them, an in and an out. So I'm just going to wire them in series. Now it's 24 volts. <laughs> in theory, that should work, so I will let you know if that works, or you'll see it. I'll make a video. Um, that's all I can think of. I got these on Amazon, 25 bucks for three of them. Uh, prime shipped, I got it in a day. I ordered two, so I can have six of them, so I have enough to do three printers. Now that I saw how amazing it worked on the Tornado, I want to try one on the CR10. Because, um, from what I understand, this might help get rid of some of that ghosting that I have on the CR10 that the Ender does not have. You know, the Ender is totally ghost free. No ghosting, no ringing. Um, supposedly, these can help with that, so I'm going to put some on the CR10 and see if I can get closer to Ender quality on the CR10. More to come. I will be building more Enders this week. I will be building the CR10S and maybe the CR10S4. Probably this week or next week, one or the other. And go from there and see what happens. Hope you guys enjoy. The TiVo Tornado, as of right now, gets an initial safe to buy from me. That's how I'm going to rate these printers as safe to buy, not safe to buy, or wait and see. It's now a safe to buy as far as I'm concerned. The quality looks spot on. I mean, it's it's a clone of a CR10 with improvements. So, I mean, you can't screw up aluminum extrusions. Oh, yes, you can. Zone Star screwed it up. <laughs> they sure screwed that one up. Um, but um, but it's, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. I love it. I mean, it, it's a good printer. It, it levels so well that I'm addicted to printing with it. I can call home and have someone here at the house just walk them through the click wheel to get another print going for me and know that it's going to work just fine. As long as you have that first layer slow enough that it doesn't get tangled up in that first layer, it's going to work great. And just make sure you use a prime line. I mean, even though this doesn't need it because it doesn't have a binder clip, I still use a prime line because the prime line will usually remove the little splooge or string that's left on the end of the nozzle so it doesn't get stuck in your print. So yeah, that's good. I might even make that prime line a little longer just to maybe make it two directions so I can make sure I get that string and pull it off. But that's it. I'm at 13 minutes. I don't want to go past 14 minutes because shorter videos tend to be better, apparently. So we're going to aim for 12 to 15 minutes for most of these videos except for the longer educational videos. Any questions, comments, please put them below. I can't read your mind, so I want what is in your head. I don't want to have to find you and suck your brains out to find out what you want, so you got to tell me. <laughs> so post in the comments below if you have any questions or things you want to see me do.